I know you have brought you by DigiKey. This week it is ST Lady Ada. What is INMPI of the week this week? Okay, this week it is the T. Oh, you'll have to click on the link because I. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, Ooh. can you click on the. Yeah. Okay, the TSC 1641. I want to make sure I get the part number correctly. Uh, this is from ST. You can even see the ST logo on the chip. I think this is their first digital power monitoring chip. So they're kind of getting into this new industry. ST's done a lot of sensors and, of course, microcontrollers. Um, but I think this is their first power monitor. And it's definitely their first, like, MIPI i3C one, I think, uh, which I thought was quite, kind of interesting. So this is a um, power monitor for up to... 60 volts, 16 bit ADC built in for monitoring voltage, power, and current. Um, very, very small, three by three millimeter DFN 10. And it has both I2C and I3C interfaces, which is kind of kind of neat. So it's starting to see I3C make it into some chips. Um, so that you know the traditional way of uh if you want to measure the current going through a device is uh, in the olden days, you would use an analog system like this, where kind of in the middle, you see there's a 0.1 ohm resistor, and you use a precision op amp that can go as, you know, low to rail to rail, uh, to the ground rail, and you can um, add some gain, looks like a, about 47 time gain on the voltage across that resistor. And then you can calculate the amperes going through your load, and then you can take the voltage and use a resistor divider on the top. Um, to get the voltage from a high voltage down to your analog input. And then you can read it with a microcontroller. Now you've got uh, low side monitoring and voltage monitoring, and then you can calculate the power, which is super great and everything, except for two things. One, a um, lot of components, and you can only do low side easily. It's harder to do high side. You can kind of do it, but you need an op amp that can be that high. Otherwise, it gets like very complicated um, with the common voltage. Um, and second, you need two analog inputs. Maybe you don't want that. And third, uh, you know, it's not as easy to set up interrupts or have low power because you have to have uh, the op amp and the resistor divider constantly on, which is why this is a cool chip. So this chip has a differential input that is safe up to 60 volt common mode. So you can do either high side or low side measurements. Um, it'll measure both the load and the um, the voltage across a very small resistor that's either placed again at the top or at the bottom of the um, the power rail. And then you can read it 16 bit ADC. You know, there's two of them, one for voltage, one for current. You can read that, do power cal calculations, set alerts, um, read the temperature, all sorts of stuff. And it all comes through I2C or I3C with an optional alert pin uh, for easy use. And then there's uh, two address pins. So of course you can have up to four of these on one I2C bus or like I think an infinite number in I3C, which is kind of cool. Um, so the the high side is what is, you know, preferable. Like I'll say whenever I do uh, projects uh, like this next one up here, um, you know, this is a, an earlier design from a couple of years ago. High side's better because you don't have um, a floating ground, which is one of the issues. If you do low side, then you, the ground of whatever you're measuring the load of is going to be a little bit higher than your earth ground, which like might be okay, but sometimes can uh, make your circuitry a lot more complicated. Um, also, you run the risk of accidentally shorting the ground, the floating ground to the earth ground, and then like it says that there's no current going through it and your calculations are all wrong. So high side is the way to go. And it's going to do up to 60 volts, which is nice because, um, you know, you can handle basically very large battery packs, solar panels, um, electric vehicles, you know, et cetera. Um, the current is de dependent on the resistor value. And I'll show you in a little bit how to calculate that. Um, but basically, you know, easily can do 10 amps. Okay, so let's skip ahead. Um, okay, so this is the specifications. Um, the chip itself is powered from about 3.3 volts, but like I said, you can measure up to 60 volts. Um, the total conversion time, you know, can also do averaging and filtering over it. So, you know, you don't wanna just measure necessarily like at a point in time, you wanna say like over, you know, 10 milliseconds, give me the average current and the average voltage, because if you have a very spiky signal, you don't want to like think that the high point or the low point is representative. So um, what's really neat is uh, this chip has built-in filter you can configure. Um, and then uh, the really neat thing about it, you know, compared to other power 
chips is that it has i3c support so what is i3c it's it's a, it's like i3c is like improved i2c so like inter chip communication or whatever this is improved version so i3c kind of takes the best of i squared c and spi um, and combines them so you know with i squared c which is in the middle there you can have multiple sensors all connected to an i squared c bus but then they all have irq pins that are separate also the, all the peripherals have to have separate addresses you can't have address collisions and they're limited you can't really go above like one megahertz it's, it's rare to see chips that go above one megahertz because they have this pull-up system that slows down um the uh communication when I, spi on the very right uses many more pins and you need a chip select for each one so you still have like extra pins and you need an extra interrupt pin for each one but it's much much higher speed because it doesn't use a pull-up system it uses a push-pull system so you can easily get 10 megahertz like no problem 20 megahertz 24 megahertz is very common so i3c kind of combines the both um you can, can go from pull up to uh push-pull mode so you can go up to 12 megahertz plus there's no separate irq lines required the irqs are actually handled by the sda and scl pins using what's called like interband signaling which is kind of handled for you transparently um, and also there's dynamic addressing so you don't have to worry about uh address uh collisions because uh, on boot um the i squared i3c controller can tell each device hey generate yourself a dynamic address that doesn't collide with anybody else's uh which is you know quite nice if you have one of multiple chips with the same address that is an issue I will say not every chip supports i3c uh it's pretty new um we talked about it like on a INPI like about a year ago um we're starting to see it more often but it's still kind of new um that said it is the future we're going to see more and more devices and chips support i3c so you can use this as i squared c um but if you have an i3c capable chip or microcontroller or microprocessor you can enter i3c mode by doing this dynamic address assignment so you know it's backwards compatible but for future use you know that you have an upgrade path uh to uh to a faster processor and this is nice because it's a nice upgrade over uh the ina series so like you know the ina i think the 227 is kind of the closest in voltage and um precision to the tsc 1641 but the tsc 1641 is less expensive competition is great thank you st for making better chips that are cheaper uh this will make everybody work a little bit harder uh, and of course as customers we benefit um so as i mentioned you have to calculate and include the shunt resistor that's the resistor that the current goes through and there's two things you want to balance if you have too big of a shunt resistor you lose precision but if you have too small of a shunt resistor you max out how much current you can measure so you want to get that because the, the maximum shunt voltage you can measure is like eight millivolts, I think. So you want to, maybe it's 32 millivolts, maybe it's plus or minus eight. Yeah, it's plus or minus eight. So you want to balance between being able to measure the, the highest amount of current that you're likely to need to measure without maxing out, topping out the internal ADC's range versus you want to have precision at the lower current. So, you know, if you get below a couple milliamps, you still want to have couple bits of precision so you can tell the difference between one or five milliamps so you know you choose it as an engineer um they give you a calculation for guidance but you know you know basically a power shunt resistor about 0.1 ohm is, is probably a good start there is also an eval board that looks like it's arduino shield compatible also works for their nucleo board so uh easy to get started it's i squared c so um, pretty much every microcontroller board can talk to this chip and it's in stock. In stock. Right now. Yes. Yeah. The chip shortage is over. Yeah. Go and ahead. we have a video. We're going to play that and then we're going to go right into new products. Does your power supply unit need to be precisely monitored? Do you wish to raise alerts if your battery packs go over or under current, voltage, power, and temperature? The TSC 1641 is our new generation of digital power monitors. It enables safe monitoring thanks to its accurate integrated ADC, its extended voltage range, and its flexible bus interface, the new MIPI I3C bus. Let's jump to our demo of an electrical skateboard. Here, we monitor the battery voltage and current under different speeds. 
we can see the alert when the current goes higher than the limit we have established. So how does it work? The TSC 1641 integrates two 16-bit channels. One is for the current measurement of a shunt resistor with a common mode voltage up to 60 volts, and the other one is for the load measurement up to 60 volts. The power is computed precisely thanks to the fact that they are perfectly synchronized. And the high temperature can be measured too. The TSC 1641 uses the new MIPI I3C interface to communicate with the microcontroller and set up the internal registers for configuration, speeds, threshold for the currents, for example. For this demo, we communicate with the new STM32H5. The MIPI I3C interface has a huge advantage in that it can be configured using only two pins, clock and data, communicates at 12.5 MHz and implements upper layer commands known as the common command codes. Concerning your industrial application, where you need to monitor the current, voltage and power to control the power budget of the entire system in fact, the TSC 1641 is meant to do that in a precise and secure way. For more information, please visit our website st.com and read our data brief of the TSC 1641. Thank you. Hi, I'm